Um, hi. Hi guys. I am losing my mind because I just came home and you will never guess what was on my doorstep two days early. A shadow in the freaking ember. Y'all, I am so excited to read this book. I'm sure you know if you're here, but this is the first book in the spin-off series of Blood and Ash. It is the Flesh and Fire series by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I literally can't form words right now because I'm so excited to read this book. It's been so highly anticipated. I was not prepared to start it today. It was supposed to come on Thursday. That's what Amazon told me, but they lied to me and I'm perfectly okay with it. I'm going to be doing a reading vlog of this with y'all and I'm just gonna tell you right off the bat, I'm so excited for this book. I'm so excited to start this new journey with these new characters that I'm gonna have to do full spoilers in this video. I wanna like read it with you guys and give my live reactions as I'm going, just kinda like talk through it with you. So if you haven't read this book yet, I would not recommend watching this video. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just don't have enough willpower to try to talk about this without spoilers. Also, I feel like that's just, in general, really hard to do with a lot of fantasy books. But anyways, I just had to get on here and do this quick intro because I'm ready to literally tear into this book right this second. So I will check in with you guys whenever I have something to say. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, guys, I am 100 pages in and I am absolutely freaking obsessed. I have been in such a reading slump recently, especially when it comes to fantasy books. I just like got out of them, which is crazy because like fantasy has always been my genre. So I've been like, what is wrong with me? Is this a me thing? Literally, no. Jennifer L. Armentrout is just a absolute genius. I don't know how she does it. She is somehow able to have amazing world building, write a really interesting, compelling story without making it confusing. She uses really like easy to understand language and she just, she knows how to like feed you info without just completely like info dumping and making your brain explode. And I just love it. She literally, I've missed her writing so much. I'm like having the desire to go back and reread the entire Blood and Ash series already because I'm just, I'm so into it. This story is so good because it is a prequel to From Blood and Ash and it really, I was wondering how it was gonna be because I'm like, okay, I feel like, is it kinda gonna be the same concept over again because it is about like another maiden? No, it is so completely different while also being similar enough that I'm like, I feel like it's in the same world, I'm really like satisfied and I feel like I'm getting the taste of Blood Nash that I want, but it's so, oh, this, I love Poppy. Like Poppy is literally one of my favorite heroine, main character women ever, like obsessed with Poppy, but Sarah, I love her equally at this point, I think, like, I don't know, that's a hard feed, but I really, really like her. So I'm gonna try to recap what we've read so far to the best of my ability. It has been a lot of information. If I miss a few things, I'll bring them back up later. But basically the whole point is this is like the original Maiden. She has come out of this deal that has happened with ancestors far in the past because this land has faced drought and rot and crops are not growing. So basically a deal was made that the fates would choose a maiden that would be the primal god of death's consort. So he's going to basically take her, I guess consort is like marry her sort of thing, like be his maid, a kind of like Hades Persephone situation. And um, I guess they will help the, the lands flourish once that deal is followed through. So Serafina, which I freaking love her name. I love the Penelope Poppy. I thought it was so pretty. And Serafina, Sarah spelled S-E-R-A. I'm like actually obsessed with literally added it to my name list. I'm insane. But um, yeah, so Sarah is the chosen maiden. And so she's pretty much in the same way as Poppy, like lived her whole life growing up and sort of like preparing and training to serve her land by, you know, going to be with the, the primal god of death and do her duty. And she, just like Poppy, is very strong and independent and, you know, wants to do what she has to do. Like she's very willing to fulfill her duties, but she's got a mind of her own. She's got a, a sharp tongue and she's not afraid to fight for what she believes in. And so basically the it's 
the prologue of the story was like the deal is happening and she goes to meet the uh, primal of death and she can't see his face of course and he pretty much rejects her for reasons we don't understand. He just says, I don't need a consort and leaves the room and because of that, like Sarah has no idea why. I guess one thing is she hasn't like remained pure. Like she has done some scandalous things on the side and um, she thinks that might be the reason. I don't know, but he didn't give an explanation, but her, her parents, the king, queen, whatever, like everybody is furious, feels like she did something wrong. And so they've kind of like made her an outcast because of this. Like she was serving as like the princess and she was wearing the veil, she was like the maiden but now she is treated as a handmaiden. Like literally, they don't let anybody know that she is the princess, the daughter of the queen. Like she's literally just a, a maid. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's funny how different it is from the Poppy situation because we see Poppy like as the maiden and see her treated very much like royalty. And you know, Hawk is her little like guard and she's very well protected where like the queen like in this story couldn't give less of a crap about Sarah like despises her like resents her like doesn't even want her around so it's it's cool to see how different it is and also Poppy had such a like tight leash on her like she had to like sneak out and stuff where Sarah is just kind of like free to go because nobody cares and so she's just kind of all over the place and she's basically stumbled across these gods the gods in general, I love seeing them in this story. Like, I love the Atlanteans. I love the like whole vampire situation in Blood Nash. Oh my God, of course I do. But the gods is like really interesting getting to see them. I really kind of get Akatar vibes a little bit. The way it's like, I because I'm a like a mythology dork. Like I absolutely love Greek mythology. And I know that's not what this is. It's kind of like a new created mythology but still like having gods responsible over like different areas of things and just seeing like i don't know like how they how they work and like how they're able to like the things about them that are special like the ether and like how their eyes have like the swirling magic and like the ways you have to like kill them like i just love the world building the magic system like all of that stuff going along with that so pretty much she's like found that gods are killing people for no reason like she's not sure why and killing them in very weird ways and she's encountered this this new god that is very obviously Nyctos who was the primal of death that she was supposed to be betrothed to but she doesn't know that yet of course I mean we're like 100 pages in and she doesn't know that yet but I am obsessed with Nyctos like I don't want to call it but like Hawk slash Castile was my everything, but I am very willing to bet that like, I might be more obsessed with Nyctos by the end of this book. So yeah, that's kind of where we're at, trying to figure out like what's going on with this craziness of the gods killing these people and what it means and waiting for her to figure out that this is Nyctos and make him fall in love with her and then destroy him or whatever the saying was that I loved. I'm obsessed. It's really good. I'm gonna keep going and I will check in whenever I have something else to say. <laughs> okay, it hasn't been too much longer. I'm on chapter 10 now, but something was just clarified that I was wondering about. There have been mentions in this book about Sarah having a gift, like she's brought that up. And I've been wondering if it was like the same as Poppy's gift. Like we knew in Blood Nash that she could like sense emotions and she could like take pain away from people. So I was like, is this a thing that like every maiden just has that? But it was like, it was being very like vague and weird about it. Now we finally like found out that she has the power to sense death and basically like reverse it, like give life back once something or someone has died, which is kind of nuts. And I'm very excited to see how that plays into the whole like having a love affair with the God of death. I would think he wouldn't be too thrilled about her stealing lives back from him. So I feel like that's gonna definitely come up. Also, Sarah has a really cool birthmark. It's a little crescent moon, which is the whole point of the moon on the book which i love 
and I'm very interested to see what that means. That's something that I eat up in fantasy books. I love when people have like marks or scars or birthmarks and it like signifies something. I know it's something that's very like overdone, but like I literally don't care. I love it. I love those things that are like overdone for a reason because they're so good. So I'm interested to see what that means. And right now she is um, in a lake very naked and she just sensed that someone is watching her so I think shit's about to go down and it's two in the morning on a Friday night right now and I was like about to get ready to put it away for the night but um not sure that's gonna happen so we will see <laughs> okay it's the next day I'm on page 200 I was just about to get on here before this last chapter and be like okay this is good i'm intrigued but i feel like it's going a little bit slow like i'm just kind of wondering you know we're like 200 pages in and i'm like what's happening with this plot i feel like it's just a lot of like running ins and interactions between sarah and nikto slash ash apparently is his name right now i guess she finally asked him like for his name and he said people call him ash so okay but um it, it just uh, it sped up and heated up very quickly and it, I don't have words, but very good. I'm definitely hoping that from here we get a little bit more of an idea of what's about to happen in this book. I mean, we got reintroduced to the germs, which we saw those in Blood and Ash. Um, so I don't I don't know what all of this has to like do with each other yet like the gods that are killing the people and then like the way they're being like resurrected. I love all the little hints though that are being dropped that like this is Nyctos and it's like the god of death like just now they were like in the woods together and she mentioned several times how there was like no sounds around them like she couldn't hear the birds and then the second he left like she said something about like life returned to the forest because he's the god of death like i don't know i'm excited for that reveal and like how she's gonna react to it i'm also excited to find out why he wouldn't just take her as his consort maybe like he saw her and like had feels for her and he was like i want to earn her by myself i don't want to just take her make her fall in love with me i don't know but um yeah that's where we're at I'm literally gonna read all day. It's Sunday, the best day of the week because it's just like nothing to do. So it's gonna be a long day. Things are happening. I, I, I'm i on chapter 20, page 275. And okay, Sarah had to use her gift to heal Ezra's, I guess like girlfriend, um, cause she had died. So that was the first time she used her gift on an actual like human full on. Um, I speculate because right after that happened, the king died in his sleep of heart failure or whatever. And now Tavius is king, which freaking literal psychopath hate him. I think that her using her gift because she's like, taking the power from the gods or whatever, I feel like she has to give like a life for a life. I think because she gave, I think her name was Mary, Mary Saul, her life back. I think that another life had to be taken to like keep the balance in nature. That's what I'm assuming. So I think that's why the king died in his sleep because it doesn't make any sense. And now Tavius is king and he's like whipping her like a psychopath because he hates her and doesn't want her to take the throne and freaking mom who, Mom, don't act like you care about me. You haven't cared about me in a gajillion years and now you're gonna see me getting whipped by your psychopath stepson and you're gonna care? No. Her and Ezra come in and see him doing this and then the whole place starts shaking and freaking the ground cracks open and now death has returned. I mean, this is definitely Ash, right? Nyctos, whatever. Like, he's coming to save her, right? I was speculating because she walked into the like room and she saw a statue of the the god of life i'm literally blanking on his name right now i was like oh my god is she about to see a statue of the god of death and realize that that is nyctos slash ash and then put two and two together i don't know we're about to see it's so frustrating when it's like oh somebody shows up and they have a hood covering their 
head so I cannot see their face at all. When has that ever happened? When has somebody ever had a hood on to where you literally cannot see any of their facial features? False. Fake news. I need... Okay, it's getting good. I'm going back to it. That was a lot. Um, oh my god, Nyctos? Or Ash? Are we calling him Ash? Or are we calling him Nyctos? I've had Nyctos like implanted in my brain, so it's hard for me to call him Ash. But either way, oh my god, he's literally like Hawk 2.0, except like uh, way more powerful and he's a freaking god, but he still has the fangs like JLA. What are you trying to do to me? I was over here like, okay I love the idea of gods, but like vampires is literally like my guilty pleasure like vampire Genre is just my everything But now he's like a god, but he's still got these fangs and the way he just torrent <laughs> that guard I'm thinking thoughts. I'm having feelings and Sarah is a bad freaking bitch. I, she kept her promise. She made a promise and she kept it. Oh my God. I, I want to know why he rejected her in the first place. I assume we're literally about to find that out, but scandalous. I'm obsessed. Okay. Page 328, chapter 24. It's just getting better and better. Um, Sarah is in the Shadowlands now in Nyctos' freaking castle or whatever. And um, she's bathing. If you've read it, you've read it. Um, but he just revealed that he can feel emotions and feel her emotions and like taste them. And Poppy! Oh my god, I literally... I love prequel books whenever like connections are just like subtly made and it's like you're putting the puzzle pieces together. It's so fun. But yeah, I'm so interested to see what's going to happen now that she's here and what this is going to mean. I love a forced proximity moment as always, literally like the best trope, forced proximity. So they're stuck in this big old castle all by themselves. I think it is safe to say things are about to go down. Okay, this video is gonna be three years long because I'm literally checking in every five seconds, but I have lots of things to say. Uh, so first of all, we found out that it was not Nyctos' choice to make the deal so that Sarah would be his consort. It was actually his father's choice who was the primal of death before him, but we don't know why he made that choice. But he died and then Nyctos took over as the primal of death, but he did not want to make Sarah be his consort because neither of them had consented to the deal and he could feel that she was scared and didn't want to do it and that just kind of like really made my heart explode like I love him a lot I'm really obsessed so it is interesting like why why was his father like what was his intent in making that deal why did he want a consort we don't know I'm also wondering like well, what's the deal with his death? Maybe it doesn't actually matter, but it wasn't clarified like how or why he died. Also just wanted to say in general, I am obsessed with the vibes of the story because it literally feels like it's Blood and Ash, obviously, meets Akatar, like with the courts and the people ruling and just the way she's like in his castle situation. And it also is just mixed with like elements of like Greek mythology. There's a lot of like straight up mentions of things in Greek mythology like Asphodel, just like the abyss, like lots of things that definitely reflect like Greek mythology's thoughts and premises around the underworld. Am I even speaking English? It's like midnight. <laughs> I'm trying here, but there's lots of like mirroring of Greek mythology in this. So it's really cool and interesting and different. It's totally like blood and ash, but with like a new take and I really like it. So yeah. <laughs> Hi guys, it is the next day. I ended up staying up really late and continuing to read after I got ready for bed last night. So I literally don't remember the last thing that I said, but kind of just wanted to catch you up to where I am. I have about 200 pages left. Some spicy things have happened. Um, Sarah went off into the woods that Nyctos told her was very dangerous, literally right after telling her that. And guess what? She got attacked and she got hurt and she almost died. He had to swoop in and save her. 
it was fabulous, but um, something kind of got introduced in the spicy moments that followed that. That is just, it's so weird because this just happened in like my most recent video, I think, or one of my most recent videos. One of my just like pet peeves in books is when a character is made a virgin for like no reason. I just, it gives me the ick and like, please let me explain. If it's like a YA book, if it's like a first love, okay, fine. But like when it's an adult story and especially whenever it's a guy that's like a literal god or just a guy that's like super hot like a guy that's literally a 200 year old god that's simply not gonna be a thing and i just don't feel like it adds anything to the story like it just i don't know like i you can his whole reasoning for being like oh i never wanted to get close to anybody totally fine with that like i think that's fine for like the cute like love story aspect of it like never wanted to get close to anyone don't you don't have to make it about that though it just it's just unrealistic and it's unnecessary to me don't love that i am overall really liking it so far though i really like the addition of the drakens i just think they are super cool i like them even more than i liked the wolven it's just something kind of fun and new i've seen some like dragon sort of fantasy characters recently in books and i think it's just kind of fun people always stick to the vampires and the werewolves and we love that but it's just kind of cool to do something new like the way they're described in this book they seem really cool so i like that I definitely so far don't like this more than I liked Blood and Ash, but I do enjoy the world. I enjoy the concept. I feel like we're definitely going to have to like come to a head with this. I feel like I kind of missed a part in the initial explanation because so clearly it seems that Sarah, the whole like make him fall in love with you and end him sort of thing. So I guess she's like, she keeps talking about how she's like attempting to make him fall in love with her and that neither one of them will be around so i guess she's obviously like planning to kill him but is that necessary for the rot to stop like i guess i'm kind of confused on what the deal was like i tried to tell myself like no it'll get explained you'll figure it out but i feel like i kind of like skimmed over a part and i'm like a little bit confused right now because the deal was to stop the rot right and she keeps like i don't know why she has to kill him I'm confused. I feel like it's for that reason, but whatever. I'm sure I'll figure it out. It'll be made more clear. I can tell. I just know how JLA's books go. We're in the last 200 pages. This was how much I read last night. Literally had like no time to read this week. So I read 300 pages in one night to try to make up for it. But yeah, I'm totally going to finish this tonight because there's no way I'm going to be able to stop. I know how she does things. So yeah, let's go. Okay, Sarah finally had to reveal her gift because Gemma showed up and was dead and she had to bring her back to life and everybody saw it and Nyctos was like, you have an ember of life, shadow in the ember, I, I love that. I'm very curious to see what happens now though because I still feel like there's something weird with it. I feel like it's a life for a life situation. Like is somebody in that room about to drop dead? I don't know. Maybe I'm literally clowning, but I wanted to put the prediction in now, so if it comes true, I can say I told you so. Oh no, guys, we've got another evil brother situation, an evil twin brother to be exact. I'm not even making fun of it. I, lo I love the brother trope. I literally eat it up. <laughs> so Ash is Nick Dose. I don't like the Ash Nick Dose nickname. Can I say that? Hot take. It, it doesn't even sound the same. Like if we're gonna call him something, why don't we call him Nick? I don't, it just, the ash to me, the explanation for it, I'm like, eh, let's just call him Nyctos. I like the name, it's a cool name. Anyways, Nyctos' dad was the true primal of life, and then his twin brother stole it from him, so then I guess he became the primal of death? Interesting, but I guess he's saying that his father gave Sarah the ember of life? IDK, we're gonna see. I'm confused. Okay, all of the shit is currently hitting the fan. Um... I'm gonna be honest, I read this explanation through twice and I'm still a little bit confused on the whole like the brothers switching from life to death and the reason that the rot was happening and how it wasn't actually tied to the deal and it wasn't tied to Sarah being born and that it would have happened anyways, but she always thought that it was tied to that and Nyctos now knows that she was planning to kill him and he was very heartbroken over it and it was making me very sad. But now um, they're under siege, so I feel like it's about to be like all out war, pedal to the metal. I'm very heartbroken for him, like, 
I mean, like, clearly she likes him, but she was gonna kill him. I don't blame him for being pissed. I hate this. I hate this. I hate this in these types of books when it's revealed and it's like, you were using me all along and it's like, no, I actually like you. And it's like, no, I don't believe you, obviously, because you were gonna stab me in the back quite literally when it comes to this book. It's rough and it makes me very sad, but um, yeah, hopefully they'll get over it. <laughs> Chapter 38. That's all I have to say. Oh, I am unwell. I was literally just about to come on here and make a comment about how this book has not been nearly as spicy as the books in the Blood and Ash series and it took until less than the last 100 pages, but um, we got what we paid for. Oh my god. Y'all, Nyctos is confusing the hell out of me. Like, are you interested in Sarah or are you not? Like, I get she was gonna stab you, but like, in love, feeling betrayed, feeling some type of way, seeming all in love and sweet, saving her from getting killed, and then being like, you think I would be your friend? Friendship does not exist between us. We will simply have a title. There's nothing else to discuss. Goodbye. It's like, I just don't, I feel like it's like inconsistent, right? Like, I'm just, like, that's not how you felt five seconds ago. I get the common sense of it all, but like, uh, I'm just kind of confused. I just feel like his character has been a little all over the place. Like, I feel like the character that was at the beginning of this book, I really loved and was obsessed with. And then whenever he actually revealed himself, he's kind of just seemed different. And now, am I crazy? I just feel like he hasn't had like a consistent way about him. And I was obsessed with him initially. And then I was, I don't know. I don't know. My feelings are all over the place. I finished guys my eyes like my vision is literally blurry right now because I read the last 200 pages of this book straight and like didn't put it down my eyes and my brain hurt but oh my god what what have I not said um Sir Holland is actually a fate we got to see the original Penelope which is the goddess Poppy was named after love that um, we basically found out that which I predicted this, but I forgot to say it in this video that Sarah is totally one of the reincarnations of Satoria, the um, girl that, Colas, is that his name? Oh my God, there's so many names in this book. The God of death that became the God of life, the brother, the, cra the crazy twin brother. His woman that he loved that keeps getting reincarnated so her soul won't live in the Shadowlands so he can't get to her. Sarah is the reincarnation of that. Did that make sense? I had a feeling right when they said it, I was like, okay, it has to be her. It makes so much sense and it is. So I have to wonder, this book totally left on a cliffhanger. She has the final ember of life in her and Nick Dose basically was like, you are the primal of life. If you die, which apparently there's a strong chance you will because of all the possible outcomes, life will cease to exist in all the lands. Um, so clearly there's like gonna be a book too and I have a feeling we're gonna get to actually meet Colas. Colas, is that how you say it? I don't even know. But I feel like we're gonna get to meet him. And like even though this, he's like the oldest and most powerful god, all the gods like stay young and hot so I'm like, love triangle maybe i don't know but yeah that that's it that was the book um it was really good i do have a few comments i feel like i'm gonna give this four stars i really liked it i think jennifer jennifer l armantrout her name is always a mouthful i love her so much but her name always bleh, gets caught in my mouth um she's a genius i don't know how she comes up with the things she comes up with i really liked this a lot I didn't love it as much as the Blood Nash series, any of the books in it. Um, I much prefer that at the end of the day to this. I think this started out the very beginning, I think had my hopes like really high. And then I kind of just had like a really deep kind of like rut and lull kind of in the middle there. I just feel like much of this book, I was like, what is gonna happen? Like, 
I know the premise is like she needs to make him fall in love and she's gonna kill him so that she can save her lands or whatever, but I just felt like there was a lot of just like sitting around in this castle and me trying to figure out what was gonna happen. It was good, but it's just, I don't feel like it slapped quite as hard as From Blood and Ash or any of the other books in that series did. Also, some things that bothered me about this is I feel like there were just a few things that were just too exact to From Blood and Ash. I mean, the way that, I, I liked Sarah, but I feel like she was kind of just like a slightly less good version of Poppy. Like, there were so many similarities between her and Poppy. Poppy is like literally my queen. I love her. She's like my favorite female character I think I've ever read. But just the way that she was always like, I have so many questions. Literally, Poppy always had questions and they always commented on how she had questions the same way Sarah did. The way that she like stabbed Nyctos and was always like threatening to stab him and he always made comments about her stabbing him quite literally from from Blood and Ash. Like that was a total thing with Poppy and Hawk all the time. Hawk slash Castile, whatever. I still call him Hawk because I just, I love, I love Hawk. But that's another thing. In From Blood and Ash, like Castile is Hawk and like that's his nickname. And it's like a big, like I literally remember there was a line that was said in this book that I swear to God was verbatim said in probably A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. A line of being like, in this moment, we are just Poppy and Hawk. We are not Penelope and Castile. That's literally in this book she, like Sarah was thinking, in this moment, we are just Sarah and Ash, not Nick Dose and Serafina. Like it was just like, I know that exact thing was said multiple times in From Blood and Ash. So again, I don't really understand the need for Nyctos to have a nickname. Like I feel like Nyctos is a great name. Also, just the fact of this story being about Nyctos, I love it, I love the premise, but the thing is like, if I would have gone into this book blind, I had no idea. So much of the book, like the first like 100 to 200 pages, like we don't, we're supposed to not know that this god is Nyctos, the primal of death that had rejected her. We're supposed to not know that, but of course we know that because we are fans of JLA and we read the Blood Nash series and we follow her on social media and she let us know. And I think even just in the back of uh, Crown of Gilded Bones, she said like, next up is Nyctos's story, stay tuned. So we knew this story was about Nyctos. So it's like the first like 200 pages, us trying to be like, oh, this God that she's talking to, oh, like let's pretend we don't know it's Nyctos. Like that would have been, I think, I think I would have still figured it out for sure, but it would have been so cool to have not known that. So part of me wishes maybe that she wouldn't have told us. I don't know, I guess she wants to hype it up. I guess she wants people to read it. That's just kind of my thoughts. But yeah, overall, like I did really like it. I have a really strong desire to go back to Crown of Gilded Bones and read the scene with Nyctos in it at the end, now that we've met him and now that we understand him. I feel like I kind of just skimmed a little bit through that like scene when I had read it just because we, like, we didn't know Nyctos. I didn't know at that time that he was gonna be that important. So now that we've met him, it'll be cool to like go back and read what he has to say. I'm sure it'll like connect more with this, but yeah. Those are my overall thoughts. Thank you guys for coming on this journey with me. I love doing these vlogs because it's always a roller coaster. I'm really excited for the next book of this series to come out. I feel like it's gonna be a lot better than this book. I feel like now that things have been like established, I feel like once Colis comes into the next book, like I think it's gonna, there's gonna be a lot more to it. And um, I literally am counting down the days until A War of Two Queens comes out. It literally, the cover was revealed today by JLA and it is stunning. Like I physically can't wait. I need Hawk back in my life. I thought in the beginning, like Nick does might steal my heart, but it still belongs to Hawk. I love him so much. I love him and Poppy so much, but yeah. If you guys read this book, which I assume you did if you're watching this, give me your thoughts down below. Did you, how did you like it compared to Blood and Ash? Are you excited for the next book? Did you like the change up of the vibes, adding in more of the gods? Just tell me, tell me all the things. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to chat with you guys, but um, I need to go to bed. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to y'all very soon. Bye.